Hello everyone. Um, I was on the news yesterday um, on GB News with Jim Dale, the meteorologist, uh, discussing climate and unfortunately the um, planned time we were allowed didn't happen because of a news item that crept in and took our time away. But nevertheless, um, there, was, there were exchanges between Jim and I and um, I'm first of all, well I'm going to comment on them and I promised that I'd give some background to the claims I make each time because I always base everything on evidence. I don't base them on Netflix videos or anything. I base them on scientific evidence. So first of all, I'll play the clip. It's quite short. And, and then I'll make comments. I'll play it again, stopping and making the comments as we go so that um, people can understand the view of a, um, what you call a skeptic, or I call it a climate realist like myself. So here it is. Here's the episode from GB News. Good afternoon. This is coming up to 25 minutes after 3 o'clock. If you've just tuned in, where have you been? It's OK. You've only missed about 24 minutes. I'm Nana Aquir. We are live on TV, online and on digital radio. Uh, now, uh, we were discussing um, lots of things. Don't forget, you can get in touch in the user way, gbviews at gbnews.com or tweet me at gbnews. Now, it's time, though, for Climate Control, where we unpick the latest stories relating to the debate around climate change. Now, today, Storm Kieran, a sign of climate change, is it? Or is it just bad weather? Scientists are warning global warming is hot on our heels and we're closer to missing the one and a half degrees target that previously, uh, than we previously thought. And according to the US scientist who first alerted the world to the greenhouse effect in the 1980s, James Hansen, the key temperature threshold will be breached as soon as this decade. He says that the global heating in the pipeline is mostly down or mostly down of the continued burning of fossil fuels, so mostly due to the continued burning of fossil fuels. So is Storm Kieran a sign of climate change or just more bad weather? Well, I'm joined now by Jim Dale, Senior Meteorologist at the British Weather Services. Also, Paul Burgess is a climate scientist, first time on, and I'm very pleased to get him on there. But let's start with Jim. Jim. A boss. Kieran, not Kieran. All right. Apparently. All right, well, if that's the best you can do, right, no, carry on. Go on. Go on. Get on with it. That's I've the asked question. the question. It was within the question that I asked. Is it a sign of climate change or just weather? Do you know what? At, at this moment, I can't say, and I don't think Paul can either, uh, in terms of weather, Kieran. Well, Paul can speak for himself. Yeah, I'm sure. I, I'm saying it's too early to be able to say that particular storm. It's a one-off event, much as Babette was a one-off event. But you I could think tell there was an ele I think there was an element within Babette that meant climate change was, was in there You'll to a certain degree. Uh, well, it, it's, as I say, these things get, get sort of chewed over in time. They're not something you make in an instantaneous decision because it's a short-term event. It's not, it, short-term events are weather. Let's make that absolutely clear. Can I just clear. remind you of how you compared Storm Babette to a bath? that was overflowing Flowing. and it gets to a point and then it tips over and that's the po tipping and point. And when I asked point. you the percentage, you couldn't give me an answer, no, but because you admitted, you said that it was. Now you're saying that it's going to take time to work out whether it is or it isn't. Not for there. I believe that's the case. For this one, Kieran, it, it was more about wind than it was about rainfall necessarily. So. Look, these things, they're all very different. Well, Storms come in, come in different colours, different shapes, and it's a short-term event. There are many short-term well, events that we see. What are you using, see. then, to determine the difference between Kieran and Babette? Uh, what I'm using is is long-term climate records that basically show the, 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 the direction of travel in terms of the various components such as temperatures, such as CO2 levels, such there's, there's many of them, such as uh, um, ice melting, such as sea level rise. Well, what I could go on. What specifically in Babette was the thing that you made uh, you made made you think it was? Climate? It was very similar to Hurricane Otis that it that it basically got a lot uh, a very intense very quickly when it, as it as it moved up through the Bay of Biscay into the west of France, picking up a lot of energy down in in the Canary Islands with the sea temperatures down there that were at record levels. I need to stress these things because this is how it works. When you get record levels, you get more energy. It's like the pan of milk on the stove that, you know, you turn the heat up slightly, starts to bubble, and it bubbles a bit more, then it overflows. <laughs> there you go. That's how it works. Paul, I want to laugh out loud. I have to, haven't I, Paul? What's he talking about? Well, I actually watched that and made watched your program yes. with Jim and made a video on it, actually. And um, my argument there was there's no actual scientific evidence whatsoever that individual storms like this are, are anything to do with climate. So I'll give you an example. Um, if you want to look at, say, the Arctic, 
Mm. People started in 1979, all the records you'll see. So if you've got a cycle and it starts in 1979, which is the highest Arctic ice cover for a couple of hundred years, uh, and we decline it, fine. But when what I do on my videos is I then give you the records before 1979. Mm. It was much lower, of course, in the 1950s. So if you're going to look at weather and confuse it with climate, you've got to look at the cycles, yes? And if you start to look at the cycles, you actually get some very interesting things. Uh, uh, and in fact, um, recent work shows if you allow for the La, Ni uh, La Nina and El Ninos, and you allow for the grouping of them, which warms the earth, no doubt about that, the alarmists say, oh, well, it doesn't matter because the warm counteracts the cold. Mm. That's not true because it happens over decades. So you get a group of warms and a group of colds. If you actually allow for that, and I've got the graphs here, which obviously radio people can't see, if you allow for that, then and allow since 1959, there is no climate temperature increase at all. In other words, you can account from 1959 to today, right, purely by natural events. And um, there's that work. But what happens is this. Uh, what happens is this. I'm called a denier. I'm not. I'm a climate realist. Mm. And when you look at the data, it doesn't get supported. For example, you know, people quote t record temperatures recently in, in the UK. The temperature taken at Heathrow was on the runway. On the runway. <sighs> It's that sort of distortion. Uh, and so I can't believe how Jim just backed down from his previous comments. There's, uh, uh, well, there's no backing down. There. There's, uh, there's absolutely well, no back down, backing down whatsoever. Um, do you, just to mention one name, Sir, Sir David Attenborough, do you, do you, do you think he's a, a, a viable person in terms of climate change and what he, what he professes? I just put that out there to you. Probably similar age kind of thing. Yeah, can I answer that? Yeah. OK, what you're doing, by the way, is not acceptable in science. It's called an appeal to authority, but I'll answer it anyway. No, I'll answer it anyway. Let's take David Attenborough. Let's take the walruses that he was, hasn't apologized for. The walruses that are doing so well that on the beach, there were so many of them, they had to climb up the cliff to, to breed, etc., and got chased off the cliff by polar bears. Polar bears who have now grown four times in numbers since 1970s because not one single aspect of your alarmism has worked, whether it be polar bears, whether it be uh, Islands that have grown, okay. you know. So, so in actual, actual fact, to, your quest, to answer your question, I like David Attenborough, and up until that walrus thing, I respected him. All right, there's, there's an even better one. Let him finish. Sorry, Karen. Uh, up until that walrus thing, I respected him, but I'm afraid he lost my respect with that because he wouldn't answer it. The evidence on the walrus thing is overwhelming. There's so much food in the sea. There's so much food in the sea, the walrus is doing so well that they don't have enough land to breed on. Yeah, I think we're going out of, out, out of the, the map at this moment in time. Well, not in really. A way. No, yes, no, no, we are. No, no, hold okay, no, no, so, no, no, so let me, let me answer the question. Of... Hold on. I'll decide whether we're going off the, off the map or not. We're not. So walrus, you aren't. Yeah, okay. No, 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 I don't think so. Because he's talking about climate change and giving examples. Right, just like you gave examples with Go what on, was then. it, a bath overflowing and something else. Yeah. He's that's... talking about walruses, actual things. Now, come on. Yeah. Um, okay, so so look, we, we've just gone through a period called the uh, Holocene. You'll be aware of that. That's yes. a 10,000 year period where mm -hmm. uh, temperatures have been more or less stable through that period. No. Give or take one degree in either direction. Oh, That's no. absolutely the case. It's no use denying it because that is the case. Mm -hmm. We just broke through that now and scientists have changed. We're out of the Holocene. We're onto the, uh, an area now where man is actually governing what's happening in the planet. It's a different name. OK, and, w w you know, that's an eon, if you like. It's a bit like the Jurassic period. Mm -hmm. We are now affecting everything that is going on. OK, mm -hmm. we've got nine tipping points, one of which is climate. All right. And that I'm, is a red warning. I'm going to give you, you 20 seconds to respond, because I've got to go to the news, uh, but please assertion. respond. That's an assertion. An assertion is not evidence. I will list on my video channel, I will list, it's called Climate Realism by Paul Burgess on YouTube, and I will list on that every single reference to disprove what you're saying now. And, uh, you know, I've got the evidence here, which people can't obviously see, but it's just not true. Assertions that man is doing that are not true. Have a look at the film Breaking Boundaries, OK, on Netflix. Have a look at it. Have a watch of it. No, Honestly, I look at the science. Come back another I look day. at the science, You will Jim. see. The I look at the science there. and the facts. Hopper no, scientists. No, no, no. Hopper scientists. scientists. Well, listen, I'll tell you what. You, Jim, you go on to Paul's uh, YouTube and he'll watch that film on Netflix. OK, so now I'll play it again and the different sections because I, I want to explain the reali realistic points back which we couldn't do in that time and um, by the way Jim Dale's welcome to um, come on a zoom call with me if he wants to to debate any of these points and, and we'll publish it um, so I'm not trying to be unfair here and doing the video
but I, I really got to get some points across. So I'll play it now and we'll stop it, start it, and explain. Jim, a boss. Kieran, not Kieran. All right. Apparently. All right, well, if that's the best you can do, right, no, carry on. Go on. Go on. Get on with it. That's I've the asked question. the question. It was within the question that I asked. Is it a sign of climate change or just weather? Do you know what? At, at this moment, I can't say, and I don't think Paul can either, uh, in terms of whether Kieran. Well, Paul can speak for himself. Yeah, I'm sure. I, I'm saying it's too early to be able to say that particular storm. It's a one-off event, much as Babette was a one-off event. But you I could think tell there was an element. I think there was an element within Babette that meant climate change was, was in there You'll to a certain degree. Uh, well, it, it's, as I say, these things get, get sort of chewed over in time. They're not something you make in an instantaneous decision because it's a short-term event. It's not, it, short-term events are weather. Let's make that absolutely clear. Can I just clear. remind you of how you compared Storm Babette to a bath? that was overflowing, Flowing. it gets to a point, and then it tips over, and that's the po tipping and point. And when I asked point. you the percentage, you couldn't give me an answer, no, but because you admitted, you said that it was. Now you're saying that it's going to take time to work out whether it is or it isn't. Not for that, I believe that's the case. For this one, Kieran, it, it was more about wind than it was about rainfall, necessarily. So, look, these things, they're all very different. Well, Storms come in, come in different colours, different shapes, and it's a short-term event. There are many short-term events that we see. What are you using, see. then, to determine the difference between Kieran and Babette? Uh, what I'm using is is long-term climate records that basically show the, 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 the direction of travel in terms of the various components, such as temperatures, such as CO2 levels, such there's, there's many of them, such as uh, um, ice melting, such as sea level rise. Well, what's I could go on. What's I have to stop it at that point to just deal with some of the points there. He's obviously going on about, well, apparently you can afterwards, by some process, which is imaginary, I think, find out whether that weather event was related to climate, whether there was a, a fingerprint of climate in it or not. But if it was um, wind, then there isn't a fingerprint of climate. And if it was rainfall, apparently there is a fingerprint of climate, or there could be. Well, he claimed there was, actually, for the first one last week and when I did the video on it. So he claimed there was a fingerprint there and there was an element of climate change there. So all this is imaginary. There is no scientific process uh, that, that has anything to do with this, nor can you say, and he's right, that these are individual weather events and you have to look at them over periods of cycles. Now, if the cycle of a particular type of thing, like a hurricane, you know, look over 100 years and see the pattern. Look over tornadoes, look over 100 years, see the pattern, and you'll see the different patterns. Only then can you make a judgment whether the climate as regards those aspects is changing. And, of course, if you take wind, which are hurricanes, you can't get better examples, they're reducing over time, so, so I don't know what his point is. Um, and to claim that somehow you can tell from an individual storm is actually wrong. But to be precise about it, for those who may know, there was a Nobel Prize awarded for a chap, um, uh, an alarmist, using a method he called the fingerprint. Uh, so a weather event could be ascribed to climate with a fingerprint of climate in it. And he used a regression analysis, a very complicated stats analysis, used in economics. And um, But he got it wrong. He got the Nobel Prize. And the mistake he made on the stats, because he wasn't a statistician, and um, horrified the people who used that method because he wouldn't have passed the first term of a student because he, he hadn't what we call normalised the data. The whole thing was absolutely rubbish. And a paper was published that completely exposed it all. So there we are. There is no such thing as naming an individual storm like we've had and saying part of it is due to climate. You have to look o over the trend. So that is what I'd like to have answered had we had time. All I could say, because uh, I knew we were very few minutes, I think we had seven minutes altogether or six minutes, not the planned 15 we ended up with. We ended up with 15 before the meeting. Then it was cut by the news item. So, and I think I'm coming back on again, by the way, so this isn't the end. But, um, so there, there, there we are with this. Um, and it, it's floundering there. I'm sorry, Jim, but you're floundering. On, on making excuses why one you said was climate. So he came, came back and said, yeah, the first one was climate because it had rain in it. Um, and the second one had wind in it. So both had wind in them, I can promise you. There we are. Let's, let's continue to, um, so I can explain, because 
When I respond now, I, I, I use some recent research I'm going to show you. Specifically, in Babette was the thing that you made, uh, you made, made you think it was climate. It was very similar to Hurricane Otis, that it, that it basically got a lot, uh, a very intense very quickly when it, as, it, as it moved up through the Bay of Biscay into the west of France, picking up a lot of energy down in, in the Canary Islands with the sea temperatures down there that were at record levels. In the green room before the meeting, Jim told me that I claimed in my video on the previous um, thing had done on it on him that he, he didn't claim anything about the land records which I use the airport well actually he did he used the word land and sea in, in it and anyone can go back to the interview and watch him saying that so he did say land and sea now he's going on about hurricanes I've just shown you how, how hurricanes are reducing if anything and there's a good reason as, as the poles warm the difference between the equator and the poles get less so there's less need for the hurricanes to carry the energy from the equatorial regions up and distribute the heat. So there's less heat to distribute, less difference, less weather. That's basically the story there. I need to stress these things as this is how it works. When you get record levels, you get more energy. It's like the pan of milk on the stove that, you know, you turn the heat up slightly, starts to bubble, and it bubbles a bit more, then it overflows. <laughs> there you go. That's how it works. Paul, I want to laugh out loud. I have to, haven't I, Paul? What was he talking about? Well, I actually watched that and made watched your program yes. with Jim and made a video on it, actually. And um, my argument there was there's no actual scientific evidence whatsoever that individual storms like this are, are anything to do with climate. So I'll give you an example. Um, if you want to look at, say, the Arctic, mm. people started in 1979, all the records you'll see. So if you've got a cycle and it starts in 1979, which is the highest Arctic ice cover for a couple of hundred years, uh, and we decline it, fine. But when what I do on my videos is I then give you the records before 1979. It was much lower, of course, in the 1950s. So if you're going to look at weather and confuse it with climate, you've got to look at the cycles, yes? And if you start to look at the cycles, you actually get some very interesting things. Uh, uh, and in fact, um, recent work shows if you allow for the La, Ni uh, La Nina and El Ninos, and you allow for the grouping of them, which warms the earth, no doubt about that, the alarmists say, oh, well, it doesn't matter because the warm counteracts the cold. Mm. That's not true because it happens over decades. So you get a group of warms and a group of colds. If you actually allow for that, and I've got the graphs here, which obviously radio people can't see. If you allow for that, then and allow since 1959, there is no climate temperature increase at all. In other words, you can account from 1959 to today, right, purely by natural events. Well, this is the work I was referring to there. Um, it's all about the uh, El Nino, the warm uh, warming of the Pacific, and the La Nina, the cooling of the Pacific, that does affect the temperature of the whole Earth, and everyone accepts that. Now, here, the red bars are the El Ninos, the warm ones, and the blue bars are the La Ninas, the cold ones. But if you look, you'll see, overall, there's a grouping here. It's called a multi-decadal um, cycle. And there's a grouping of them. So look at this period, overwhelmingly warm. But look at this period, overwhelmingly cold. Now in this work, you do have to allow for volcanoes. So what you do is you allow for this effect on the temperatures. And you take that away from the temperatures to see what other variables there are. And this is the result you get. It pretty well accounts for everything. It's a flat line. So what it shows is that between 1959 and now, you can account for all the weather changes, all the warming and cooling bits we've had, you can account for it just with natural cause. Now, this work is from a Tom Nelson podcast, um, and I'm putting the link to the full one-hour detail of this in, into my description below this video. But this is the background work. Now, those who really want to go into this can go into it now on the Tom Nelson podcast. I'm going to use that quite a lot because the Tom Nelson YouTube channel has got well over 100 interviews with um, engineers, scientists, all sorts of people, chemists, you, know, you name it, uh, who are also sceptical um, and provide evidence, provide details. So it's a superb reference source. The problem is it, it, it does get technical and it does take an hour or more per subject. So my job is to try to simplify things and explain. But this is what I was going to show had we had the time. And of course... I just had these on a piece of paper with me. So it's frustrating that you can't have proper debates where you can show the information. But there we are. And and so this is why evidence for saying you can account for it naturally. By the way, this is not the end of it. What causes the end? What causes these patterns? 
Well, actually, the author put this up, and there we are. There's his reasoning. You see, we're not claiming we've got the complete answer here. It's science is about keeping on exploring and checking against reality. If it doesn't check out, it's wrong, and so on. So there we are. I also had this graph with me, and it's quite interesting. All those grey lines, those squiggly lines, are the result of 102 climate models. And the red lines, the average of them, and the blue and green lines are the, and the blue is the um, squares, are there the satellite observations of temperature, and the green are the balloon observations of temperature. And um, you can see that the, all the grey lines are way off, way, way off. So none of them agree. There is one very near, the Russian one, by the way, but the 102 there don't agree um, with the reality, don't agree with actual measurements from satellite and balloons. So what you've got there are opinions. So let me explain what, you, what they're doing and what, what, what it's done by the alarmists. It's like, uh, first of all, getting 102 people together with different versions of their, well, their opinions of what's going to happen to the climate. But all those 102, before they enter the room, it's been proven they're wrong because they don't agree with reality. So what you then do is you take an average of all the wrong predictions. And on that, you base the entire ruination of Western economies and huge increase in prices we're suffering already today with huge amounts to come if they carry on, a total disruption of Western civilization based on this. These are opinions models. They are not evidence and should only be treated as opinions. Uh, and I had that with me just in case I had to explain the real basic stuff here about models and reality. Um, there's that work. But what happens is this. Uh, what happens is this. I'm called a denier. I'm not. I'm a climate realist. Mm. And when you look at the data, it doesn't get supported. For example, you know, people quote t record temperatures recently in, in the UK. The temperature taken at Heathrow was on the runway. On the runway. It's that sort of distortion. Uh, and so I can't believe how Jim just backed down from his previous comments. There's, uh, uh, well, there's no backing down. There. There's, there's absolutely well, no back down, backing down whatsoever. Um, do you, just to mention one name, Sir, Sir David Attenborough, do you, do you, do you think he's a, a, a viable person in terms of climate change and what he, what he professes? I just put that out there to you. Probably similar age kind of thing. Yeah, can I answer that? Yeah. Okay, what you're doing, by the way, is not acceptable in science. It's called an appeal to authority. Just to expand on that point, appeal to authority, my favourite quote on this explains it very well. Just as he had expected, the preacher retreated to authority as soon as he feared his ideas could not stand on their own merit. Reasonable argument was impossible when authority became the arbiter. Orson Scott Card, Seventh Son. But I'll answer it anyway. No, I'll answer it anyway. Let's take David Attenborough. Let's take the walruses that he was, hasn't apologised for. The walruses that are doing so well that on the beach there were so many of them they had to climb up the cliff to, to breed, etc., and got chased off the cliff by polar bears. Polar bears who have now grown four times in numbers since 1970s because not one single aspect of your alarmism has worked, whether it be polar bears, whether it be... Uh, Islands that have grown, okay. you know. So, so in actual, actual fact, to, your quest, to answer your question, I like David Attenborough, and up until that walrus thing, I respected him. All right, there's, a, there's an even better one. Let him finish. Sorry, Karen. Up, up until that walrus thing, I respected him, but I'm afraid he lost my respect with that because he wouldn't answer it. The evidence on the walrus thing is overwhelming. There's so much food in the sea. There's so much food in the sea, the walrus is doing so well that they don't have enough land to breed on. Yeah, I think we're going out of, out, out, out of the, the map at this moment in time. Well, not in really. Way. Yes, no, no, we no, are. No, no, hold okay, no, no, so, no, so let me, let me answer the question. Hold on. I'll decide whether we're going off the, off the map or not. We're not. So walrus, you aren't. Yeah, okay. No, 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 I don't think so, because he's talking about climate change and giving examples. Right, just like you gave examples with, the, was it a bath overflowing and something else? Yeah. He's that's... talking about walruses, actual things. Now, come on. Yeah. OK, so, so look, we, we've just gone through a period called the uh, Holocene. You'll be aware of that. That's yes. a 10,000-year period where mm -hmm. uh, temperatures have been more or less stable through that period. No. Give or take one degree in either direction. Oh, That's no. absolutely the case. It's no use denying it, because that is the case. Mm -hmm. We just broke through that now, and scientists have changed. We're out of the Holocene. We're onto the, uh, an area now where man is actually governing what's happening in the planet. It's a different name. OK? And, you know, that's an eon, if you like. It's a bit like the Jurassic period. Mm -hmm. We are now affecting 
everything that is going on, okay? Yeah. We've got nine tipping points, one of which is climate. All right. And that I'm, is a red warning. I'm going to give you warning. 20 seconds to respond, because I've got to go to the news, uh, but please, Paul, respond. That's an assertion. An assertion is not evidence. I will list on my video channel, I will list, it's called Climate Realism by Paul Burgess on YouTube, and I will list on that every single reference to disprove what you're saying now. And, I, you know, I've got the evidence here, which people can't obviously see, but it's just not true. Assertions that man is doing that are not true. Have a look at the film Breaking Boundaries, okay, on Netflix. Have a look at it. Have a watch of it. No, I'll look at the science. Come back another I look day. at the science, You will Jim. see. The I look science at the science and the facts. Proper no, scientists. No, no, no proper scientists. scientists. Well, listen, I'll tell you what. You, Jim, you go on to Paul's uh, YouTube and he'll watch that film on Netflix. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, so all the references, uh, all, all the video links are in the description below this video if you want to follow any of those points up. And I'm also offering Jim this. If he wants to send me any recording he wants to make, I will publish it um, here on this channel without any editing, just as he supplies it, so that he can respond in that way and be fair. So that's it. So there we are. It was a very short interview. Um, and I do want to make a point here. I do not make any money out of these appearances. Um, I just get my expenses covered and that's it. I, I don't make a cent out of this. Uh, I'm doing it for the same old reason I always do these things. And um, people may accuse me of being paid by the fossil fuel industry. Well, my answer to that is I wish I was. I'm not. I actually, I'm out of pocket on the whole thing quite a lot. So um, I just want to make that clear. And um, I think I've been invited back. Nana uh, asked me back next week, although I don't know what's going to happen next week in London, so we'll see whether that happens or not. Uh, and thank you for watching. And by all means, ask questions in the comments below. And I, as you know, I always try to answer every question. I am beginning to get some threats in questions and, you know, personal yeah. threats and all that sort of thing. I don't mind people calling me stupid or I just ignore that. But some of the things have been a bit nasty recently and I've had to, you know, take some actions on those. I don't know why, because all I'm doing is, is explaining the truth uh, about all this climate alarmism. I did take a quick look at that next Netflix uh, documentary um, from the same people, of course, who did the David Attenborough um, one with all the walruses in. And, of course, David is also guilty on the one about the Great Barrier Reef, um, which, you know, is at the healthiest it's ever been and so on. Um, so, you know, I, I don't really want to be referred to documentaries by Netflix, but I did take a look, and it's absolutely absurd but i'm not going to spend time ripping that to bits um especially as i'm sure netflix don't want me to take any bits of it I, you know i don't want to get into trouble there so um but that is not a basis for arguing scientifically with me it really isn't and even when i've given you the video links inside those video links you'll find the scientific references and everything to support what i'm saying so um thank you for watching see you next time